Okay, next talk is going to be uh, getting our software on user sense, and uh, I'm happy to introduce you, Alex. Enjoy. Um, well, good evening. Thanks for being here. Um, I'm going to talk about uh, getting the software on the user sense. This talk is going to be a bit about uh, spelling the obvious because sometimes it's needed. There's a lot of assumptions that we're taking for granted, and I would like to. Well, challenge some of them and some others just, um, well, discard them. Uh, to get started, uh, my name is Alej. I, I work for Blue Systems and during the day and during the night. I do the rest of the things I do, which is mostly um, I'm part of the board and I develop in several KD projects like KDevelop and KD Edu and so on. Also, I have a life outside of KD. Some people like to know that. Sorry? Yeah, apparently. I have a cat. I can tell you about him later. Um, so today, um, we're talking about we're people who make uh, software, who makes applications, and what does it look like, our, our work? And as, as KDE, as a, as a community, what do we do? Uh, the developers in KDE, what, what we do is uh, we push our code to Git, and then there's two kinds of projects. Some of them um, are released through the release team and the um, magical releases. So you just put the things in the right branch in Git, and they automatically appear in, in the user system somehow. Uh, there's another kind of projects, which is the ones that we used to call extra gear. Now we don't really have a good name for them. But basically, instead of having a release team, you get the release team hat, you put it on, and then you create a package out of the software, the, the, the code we have in Git, and then some other sources, such as the translations are placed somewhere else, and then the icons can be also in weird places, and so on. But essentially what we are doing then is, is we release tarballs. Tarballs are the obvious I was talking about. Uh, they are source code, and they are useful for not really anybody, because it's basically redundant with the what we have in Git, and it's not something that the user can use as as is. I mean, the user definitely he will have a compiler, he will have uh, all of the libraries in his system, and he can compile all of the stuff. But essentially, this tarball is not fun to use, especially t taking into account that people are used to things being uh, reasonably automatic lately, and and so on. Nobody wants to spend twenty minutes or even one hour or five hours to compile the applications. So um, this has been like that, though, for the last 20 years. Free software projects release tarballs, and then there's people from the woods who come and turn those into things that can be used by, by, by actual users. Um, and this has a certain amount of problems that I will, I will, I will enumerate a little bit to be able to explain my, 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 my point of view. The, the, the first one is that um, since it's the, the people from the woods who come and turn the, 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 the source code into things that people can use, it's them who decide what versions are people allowed to, to be using. Uh, and that can be a bad thing. It, it's, good, uh, it's a good thing that there is somebody who is thinking about the user and deciding what thing the people should be doing. But on the other hand, us as developers, we, 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 we like to think that we work for the user and that we work for the people. And then when we fix something, we expect it to get to the people. Um, if the last table version is not on the people's and our users' computers, we get frustrated. Uh, this leads to a lack of feedback. The, if I talk to somebody who is using an LTS release about KDevelop, he will tell me about, uh, he will give me feedback about the problems he, we used to have in 2012 or in 2014, but not the problems we have now. So it will be a sad conversation where he will tell me, yeah, we have this problem. And then I will say, yeah, I remember we solved it like that. Bad times, right? And then he will nod and say, yes, I use a stable system. So that's why my system is not working, or your application is not working. And the, the, 
the problem can be extrapolated to all of the most of the end user applications that the, the, the people are, are using because most of the rules that um, are being followed for the for deciding which software to bring to the user are uh, thought for system components such as open SSL or uh, the kernel but not really for KDE applications or kdevelop or office suites right but things are like they are right and then as well in KDE we are not only about Linux we try to think about other platforms because we think it's important and then those minions from the woods like Linux, but apparently they don't like compiling things for other uh, platforms. They don't do Windows things. They don't do OS X things. They don't do Android things, which are platforms that we like it or not, they're very important. Like the people we want to get to are often in these platforms and, and we want to serve these people as well, despite their lack of taste when it comes to choosing an operating system or a kernel for that matter. So anyway, we need to find uh, solutions for that problem for the other platforms because nobody is going to come from elsewhere and, and solve the problem for us. And in the end, we've had to solve the problem as well for, for other cases, such as the CI. We have an immense set of, of computers in the clouds that are already compiling everything we're doing and in a more very similar way that the distributions are compiling the things. Of course, there's technical differences, but uh, most of them are not very interesting. And in general, it always seems a logical and a good idea that we could be leveraging that. Um, but at the moment, what we're doing is just throwing it away. And whoa, whoa. that's what, uh, if I think about how the communication goes, it, it, it's a bit like this. So us as developers, we have some things on Git. Those things, we get feedback from the CI. The CI tells us some things about those. But the things that uh, we know about, for example, that the CI is trying, those things are discarded because we don't. Nobody cares about what these computers are doing, right? We just cared about the, uh, about the warnings, at least nowadays. On the other hand, uh, like I said, that those things we have uh, on on Git, the developers puts on Git is a feedback that the distributor gets, and then the distributor pushes the problem, the, the software to the user. And then the user has something that some developers worked on in the past by a random T, depending on the distribution you use. In fact, one of the big decisions you take when you choose a distribution or another is whether this T is going to be big or, or old, right? Like the, the Arch Linux user will tell you he likes Arch because he really wants to use the last stuff. And then the Debian person will tell you, I really like to use old stuff. It doesn't really work this way, but it feels that way. But in general, what, what the, the, the part we're interested in is the, the red line, right? Like all of the developers, or maybe 95% of the developers in KDE are interested in, in, in making things for the user, making sure that the user is, is fed the, the best software we can offer him, right? And and when the user gives us feedback, we don't want the feedback from something that we already produced in the past, but we want something that is the freshest the possible. And, and well, as KDE and as the people who care about, about this problem, it sounds like it should be our duty a little bit to see how to improve it. Improve it. So to spell it a bit, the problem is that we're not being efficient at solving the problems of the users. When the user has the problem, is not at the moment where we can uh, solve it very often. We have some mechanisms, right? Uh, some, some of the things we, we try to do is to have a separate branch, which is basically a it's basically what the code used to be when we released that version and we solve things over there and then release those things from the past again. But that has problems as well, right? It has problems because we have to spend time uh, making sure that some other branch, which is basically nothing that uh, the current development team has in, in his mindset, we're ha ha we have to care about it. And then we also have the LTS releases, which is the same solution, but just at the 
it's making the problem a bit a bit bigger, but we still make sure that the people who are using things from one year in the past, they are not really miserable, which is a good thing. But it's still not the solution. So when we talk about we want to provide the people the best solution, the best Linux operating system that we're looking for, we're not talking about having lots of branches and lots of, of, of stable releases. At least that's, that's how I see it. And I am confident that somebody should or would have to tell me I'm wrong. Uh, but I, I don't see that this is going to be the way that Linux is going to become stable. It's going to become useful. The, the, the ways I, I, I see Linux being useful is by making sure that what the, the community spends their time on is the things that the, 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 the users can profit and benefit from. So, What's the, what's the conclusion there? The conclusion there is that everyone is sad. Developers are sad because they spend time fixing things, and the users keep uh, being sad because the things that the developers sadly did wrong, they cannot leverage them. And then distributors are in the middle. So if a user asks a distributor, he will tell you that the developers are doing the, the, the job wrong. And if the developers uh, tell the distributors, the distributors will say, well, that's our rules. And, and we need to be played by them because otherwise the wall is craziness, which is true. But then, uh, well, compromises, I guess. I don't know. Um, the, CI the CI is always sad <laughs> because it's doing so many things and nobody's using them, right? So. We've been talking about distributions. The new trend nowadays is to talk about Linux bundles. Um, I'm going to talk about uh, a little bit about the bundling, bundling systems we have nowadays, and then I will talk about the other platforms. Um, I want this second part of the presentation to provide a bit of, of perspective on how I think we could, could solve the, the problems I've outlined. Otherwise, you would be all sad as well when you leave the, the room, and that wouldn't be nice. That's why I also make these bad jokes, because it's good for the, for the brain. Um, so knowing this problem, one of the big companies in the, in the ecosystem, uh, I wanted to say Red Hat, but theoretically, this is a gnome idea. Um, I don't know. I'm not going to get into, into politics anymore. Uh, it's interesting because they have exactly the same problems as us, and they are trying to solve it. How are they trying to solve it? Well, they came up with a format that, where you can compile applications as upstream, and then you can distribute it to everyone who uses Linux. Um, this more or less works. The idea how it would work on, on Flatpak is that when you use an application, this application would be run on a sandbox environment, and then every organization, such as uh, LibreOffice, GNOME, KDE, could have a repository or 23, and then you could get the software from it. Then um, this is what, uh, so uh, to, to create those packages, they came up as well with a format so that you can create uh, the packages easily. Uh, they support something they call platforms. So since we don't want to have huge packages, uh, they, they give you the, the, the possibility to create for each application one version of what we could consider is the SDK of the platform. Um, we're, we're used that on, on, on other platforms like Apple or um, Windows, we have some SDK, which is a base where you can build all of the applications. That's something that, that wouldn't work on, on, on Linux, or at least that's not how we work. So basically, each of us can decide to use a platform and then live with it. Uh, what I did when I started looking into um, Platpak is create a, um, a big package kind of thing that has all of Qt. It has all of the Qt frameworks and a couple of components we need to integrate properly and then go by it. So basically you say which is the runtime you're using, which is the SDK thing, then the name of the application, this is the things you want the sandbox to expose, and then you list the modules you want to have compiled within your, your bundle. Um, 
it's interesting to note that uh, everything that is not part of the platform is part of the developer to, to decide uh, to bring in. Uh, one of the big problems we have nowadays with the current model of, of package systems is that when you're developing your application, you have to, you can't assume that any of the libraries around you is going to be consistent. And that's a problem because some versions will have some problems and some other versions will have other problems. The solution is clearly always let's fix it, let's fix it upstream and make sure everything works. But when we want to provide an auto-contained um, solution, we often want to be able to say, well, that's what, uh, what it looks like for me and that's what it's going to look like for my users. And it's, it's really powerful to be able to say, I've tested that, you can use that, other than I tested this code, sent it to the sky, and then you will get something that is an outcome and probably will look similar to what I sent, but you never know that it's exactly the same. So here, uh, specifically, I, I get to say, which is my application, which is the, the libraries I, I depend on. I can specifically say which are, how they are compiled, so I have full control of them. Um, and then I get some output that is what the user would get. Also, it's not really necessary to use this format. There's ha more hackery ways of getting uh, a package. It's, it's just convenient. Did you have a question? A quick question, what's the difference between runtime and SDK? Uh, you know, distros have this dev package and then the binary package for, for libraries. It's more or less the same. So you don't want to have a huge runtime. Uh, you don't want applications to require a huge runtime, right? So some things will be stripped out of it because are things that they are things that you only need for compiling applications. So it's just split. Um, then there's Snappy, which is a similar solution also to be able to run applications on every Linux. Uh, by every Linux, I mean every Linux distribution to some extent. Um, it's also using some sandboxing. Uh, they use a Parmer for the sandboxing. And instead of having this uh, repository for its distribution, they more like plan to provide a huge uh, kind of um, store to, to offer all, all the applications where you can list them, you can have them up there, um, some rating reviews and stuff like that. And they also have their own little um, format, we can look at, at it a bit, so that, oh, of course not. But let me see if I can get internet connection. QCon2016. Well, it will take a while. Uh, Anyway, maybe it's, it makes sense to get back to it later. If I don't have it yet. Oh, I did have it. So that's, that's the example that they, they suggest. So it's obviously the nice one, uh, but it can give you a bit the idea. So you basically, sorry? Yeah, it's a good idea, good thinking, Harold. This is enough. Well, kind of. Basically here, uh, it's interesting, they uh, are using a lot more the um, semantics of, of, of Ubuntu and Debian packaging, but basically you pull the dependencies you need as well. Uh, here they're talking about binary packages, and then you explain a bit how you want it to be executed. Uh, since all of those systems need some kind of magic to happen to, to make sure that the applications will run properly and will know about the right environment variables and the right but places of the system, they usually have these things here. They're talking about the Qt5 launch, but I mean, that's what is going on there. Um, I want to show as well uh, another example, bu -bu -bu, which is using Neon. So in KD, we have the advantage that mo uh, a lot of things have been already being packaged for Ubuntu. So this is for an application as well. So what they're doing here is instead of, of compiling the application when you create the, the bundle is already pulling the, the application itself and, and putting it in the package and then it more or less works. 
Um, what what I, I really like about these uh, processes, and I think it's something we should look into, is to make sure that it's the developers that create those packages because it's a developer who tests what the end user will be using. And it's not some machine that produces something and then it goes untested. That, that could be bad. I don't really have good solutions for that yet because we're not doing it. So, well. Oh, so if you have questions about those, you can ask uh, Scarlett and Harold. They know more about it than I do. And then the, the third I wanted to mention is App Image. Um, App Image, uh, the, the developer is also here in the room, so I will be a bit careful with what I say. I don't want any tomatoes. But the idea uh, a little bit is, uh, it's a very different approach. The other two is about providing something part of the system that uh, we'll be able to execute applications. Here, what we're talking about, it's a system that uh, will, you download a file, you click the file, and the, and the application is executed. Deal with it. So the, it's re relying on how Linux works and how Linux has been working for a long time. Uh, so the advantage clearly is that it's retrocompatible by some definition of retrocompatible. I don't know if it's very easy to be able to tell whether an application is going to work on any system or not. It's probably not possible. But then it's not possible with Snappy or Flatpak anyway as well, because you need to be able to have the, the runtime on, on all systems, which they want. Um, the big difference as well is that the other two solutions provide some boxing solutions, which is important because here we're talking about uh, users installing um, binaries from random places from the interwebs. So having some kind of security is, is a good idea. App image leaves that up to the system. So, well, since it's retrocompatible, it means that on the normal systems you have nowadays, there won't be any kind of, of security, so you, you will have to trust whoever you're downloading it from. Um, maybe in the, in the future, this can be looked into. Um, anyway, you can talk about that with Simon. I, I don't know anything about it. Um, yeah, we can look at uh, the recipe for kdevelop for, um, for app image. It's a bit, a bit uh, scary. So I will just say, take into account it's a complex application, don't don't expect something big. But it's basically a bash script. So uh, I, I don't know if you saw, there was a Docker thing before. The idea is that you create a Docker with a very old Linux system, such as CentOS 6, I think it's they're using. And then you compile your pool, you compile all of the dependencies, you install them somewhere, and then out of it, you create the, the package. Uh, so as you see, it's what I was saying. It's the Linux we are talking about, we're talking about things that have been possible to do on Linux since long time. It just, we're doing it now because now it's trendy and 10 years ago it wasn't trendy. But some of these things probably should or could have been able to be done back then. Then on Android we're doing something similar. Uh, Android, uh, I started uh, working on it with the idea that it's when you create the, when you develop the software uh, on using the same build system and build directory, you, you get to generate the APK, which is the thing you send to the device or to the app store. So it's part of the development process. Um, here it's the documentation. I, I don't, I don't know of any project that has a, has a scripted. Uh, it's Obviously, possibly possible to script. You just need to script, see, make, make, make install, and then make, create APK. Um, this is all the documentation we have. Um, what we tried there is to make sure that it's the the same de uh, development process that that you use on 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 Linux. We, interestingly, it's the opposite way of how all of these systems work. On on Flatpak, they created their own tooling. So, if you want to develop using Flatpak from your application from kdevelop, well, what you should end up doing or you would end up doing is calling the Flatpak tools that will call the source code somewhere, but you won't be able, you won't be calling make theoretically, or you will be calling make through Flatpak so that uh, things happen. Or what we're doing on Android is we're just using normal CMake, 
and cross compilation on, on, on Android. OSX, um, the new trendy thing on, on the KD cross compilation world nowadays is to use something we call emerge. This is, um, this is KD, I think. I'm not seeing it from here. Yeah, so here you see there's a weird loop. It's because they try to compile kwrite and kate on the, on the same script. But basically what it does is um, fetch the icons, uh, remove the things they don't want, and then they create the DMG <laughs> with the Mac deployed queue thing. Um, yeah, that's only for deploying, isn't it? Well, the, the, there's been this tool for, and I forgot Windows, but what I wanted to say is that on OS X, on Windows, we're using some tool that was created for the KD Windows guys that basically pulls all, all of the dependencies and outputs lots of binaries. And from there, we create the formats that are, are used for on those platforms. Let's say an MSI for Windows, a DMG for for, for OS X. But what we're trying here is on, on all of those platforms to be uh, like the most native as possible, right? Like to make sure that, the, that what the user gets from us is something similar that what the user would get from another normal project in, in, in the platform. So um, to sum up, uh, we have an opportunity to create a better flow, a better experience between uh, what the user has and what the developer is offering and what the developer can offer when the user is not happy. Um, we don't want to compromise the stability. Actually, having uh, applications outside of, of the system construction part, I think that it's a good opportunity for so that distributions can rely more on LTS services and uh, services uh, solutions. So. You won't have to upgrade your Linux distribution so often as soon as you can just upgrade the applications, which is actually what you often want to have up to date, right? That uh, what you usually interact with is with, with Kate. You want to have all of the features on Kate, on Kdevelop. You don't want to miss out on those. But one is not often really eager to have um, the last version of Network Manager. It can, it can happen, and on those cases, you will have all of the Linux possibilities, but I think that for a user, it will, it, the bundling solution makes uh, the most sense when, when using an, an, an LTS solution, which means happy users and happy developers because we have this uh, cycle of feedback solved, and the, the system distributors, they can focus on making actual secure and solid systems and that they don't have to be worried about the packaging of all the applications, which I understand it's a, it's a problem, at least to some level, right? Uh, because then they need to have these two heads, like the people are asking them for new releases, but what their problem usually is, is that they want to offer really good SSL, a really good kernel, a really good base, but uh, an application doesn't, applications don't play by the same rules. Then as, uh, as, as KD, we need to also decide a bit how we would like to work. Like, is it really the, the developers who need to be providing those packages or should it be the CI system or the CD, so continuous distribution system? Or should we the, be the release team that they're outputting all of that? I mean, everything has ups and downs. Nobody likes to have to test uh, a package or nobody likes to have to well, compile something weird, but then on the other hand, uh, it's it's useful and it it will give us the that experience I was talking about that you're testing the same thing that the user is. I think it's related to the that problem that we want to make sure as well that those new systems that are starting are really part of the development process. So it's not ideal that the developer is using. For example, let's say make make install for for using his development, and then when he makes the final version, he starts using the Snappy or Flatpak or whatever he's using. I think ideally the developer should be compiling every time the 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 thing that will be tested in the end, and that what will also make sure that the the thing that has been tested and that has been developed on is the thing that you're using. You don't want that on the last step you to see that uh, lots of assumptions are broken. 
And then we need to make sure that we don't um, bite our own hands. We need to make sure that security isn't com compromised. Linux hasn't had lots of problems because of viruses. And one of the big reasons for that has been that most of the software we've been getting is from distributions. At least that's my impression. You can correct me if, I, if you think I'm wrong, but that's my impression. Uh, having things coming from elsewhere could be a problem. Uh, all of us, we've tried, if, if you use Android, you see that w whenever you want to install something that's coming from outside, they made you check out some checkbox that uh, that is saying basically don't let things come from the outside. It's not that things from the outside are bad by definition, but while well, trusting human nature is not also ideal on every case. We also need to make sure that uh, adopting these solutions is bad for uh, w when it comes to integrating with the system. Being in a sandbox environment is good, it's great, makes everything uh, more, makes everything safer, but then it it is a barrier of communication you have with the whole system. Uh, it's not bad, bad by definition, but it will it will pose problems in, the, in uh, at moments, and we need to solve them. And it's good that we solve them as early as possible, so we see them coming. Uh, an example is that it's really common nowadays that uh, applications talk with things in the system through Dbus uh, that doesn't really work by default on on any of the sandboxing systems, not on, on Flatpak, not on Snappy. It's possible to do, and uh, on the, des the tests we've been doing, it's, it, it can be done, but then it's something you need to request, and it's something that you need to take into account. Um, that's all. And then system resources. We don't want that uh, the user, by adopting these technologies, he starts wasting his system resources that he has paid for uh, when buying his laptop just because there's a new fancy technology. We don't want less memory by default. We don't want less disk space. I mean, we need to make sure that we're doing good, good use of, of the resources. Some might be lost, but we, don't, we need to make sure we're not going back by orders of magnitude. That's, that's my perception. And now, if you have any questions, you can make any questions. So you presented like three different solutions, right? I was uh, wondering if any of these have a, um, have an answer for like optional dependencies, because traditional distributions had like you had kdevelop and you had the PHP plugin, which you can install and then you get a new feature in kdevelop. Uh, can you do that with this? It's possible to do. It's not trivial. Uh, so both of them they have uh, on Snappy. They call them. Um, interfaces. interfaces, yes. On 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 Flatpak, I don't remember. You know. Uh, Flatpak, they they don't really have that concept yet. It's being worked on now. Yeah. Well, anyway, the problem is that you need to make sure that the um, the whole build dependency tree is the same, right? Because otherwise, people, I have people, uh, things might not work together properly, and then you would have problems. And I think that one of the interesting parts of this is that. Maybe then it's KDevelop's responsibility to offer PHP in, in, in the bundle. I mean, it shouldn't be that hard, right? Um, well, it depends on the case, right? There is this desktop environment, I think it's called Plasma, oh, yeah. which has plugins that are called Plasmoids, and you don't want to install them all by default, right? So. Uh, well, another, another interesting uh, discussion is whether it would make sense to have uh, Plasma as uh, as a process or the Plasma shell in a bundle, right? Uh, it would have good things, but then Plasma especially, it's one of those things that connects to everything like crazy. And well, I don't know. We, we should look into that at least at some point, maybe. Plasma would also be the thing which provides the portal interfaces for the actual sandbox application. So it can't be in the sandbox. It must be outside. Challenge accepted. <laughs> <laughs> Shit, I said that. Sorry? I mean, uh, sorry, sorry. I think you need something outside which would present you a window like for file dialog or something like that. At well, least that some could be Queen as well, well, right? Sorry? That could be Queen as well, right? What? Queen? What is the window manager? Ah, uh, give it now, okay. Yeah, yeah, that that could be also, yeah. I doubt Quinn. We can make it uh, a bundle. 
maybe we can. I don't know. I mean, we definitely can. We can also have a, a, a demon, right? It, it's not like we are forced to take an approach. Any more questions? Yeah. Hey, I'm Simon. So I'm the app image guy. I just wanted to clarify one point about app image, which is actually not so much a system for building what's going into the image, but really a format for the image itself. So it's, it's a bundling format, which doesn't define what you put inside, which is entirely up to you. You can think of it as basically a disk image that is mounting itself when you execute it, and then executes whatever you put into that disk image. So far the project hasn't been about how you create that stuff that goes into it. So in theory you could use existing dev files, unpack them, put them inside, or you can go, uh, go the way shown here. That's uh, obviously much more work by uh, spinning up a CentOS virtual machine and compiling stuff there. So uh, by the way, I will be holding um, a lightning talk about app image. It's actually the very last one in the very last room today. So if you have more questions or would like to chat about app image, I would be happy to see you there. Thank you. Another so there seems that we are back at having two standards at least to do the same thing, maybe three. If you had to bet money, where would you bet your money? <laughs> I don't want to. Ah, oh, come on. Be very careful what you say. <laughs> I'm not, I'm not going to say that. You can, will have to pay for a lot of beer if you want to answer. And I, it's not going to be recorded as well. <laughs> <laughs> Well, no more questions, I think. Anyone else? No one? Okay, that's it. Thanks. Thank you.